lightning round of the inbox. All right, so we are doing an inbox and we are pulling the questions from textintogood.com slash forum slash inbox exe. So if you want to get there, you can just go to the forum and there's an inbox section right there. And we're just going to go through these and answer some of them. I'll answer the easy one first. What software did Logan use to make its Viander? All right, the name of the software is uh, FL Studio. I didn't want to say Fruity Loops because that sounds so amateurish. FL Studio, yeah, it's, it's lame. I know. I got another one here. Is a Unicomp Model M a good keyboard for gaming and general use? Have you used the uh, Unicomp Model Ms? I have. They're just about the same, aren't they? I mean, they they're buckling identical. springs. There they are. I don't think they're as classy looking as a Model M, a regular <laughs> Model M, the IBM version that is. No, they're fine. They're they're exactly identical. The only difference is you can get them with a Windows key, and that's actually kind of handy because I get tired of my caps lock key being a Windows. Are you key. kidding me? I love that. The only thing, the only thing I hate about it is when I. And carrying around a Model M and I plug it into someone else's computer and they haven't done the registry hack to change uh, the caps, caps locks into uh, the Windows key or the super key, as some Linux users will kill me if I keep saying Windows key. But I love it. I don't know. It's, it feels better than pressing super key and things. Super key alt meta? Is that yeah. what you're looking for? Yeah, looking for, I don't know what I'm doing. It's <laughs> super just, key alt meta. I'm doing some kind of like sign, derpy sign language here. <laughs> Three-fingered salute. <laughs> I have no idea. All right, do you have any questions there? Um, change in PCIe. Well, who's uh, this from? This is from Got Crinkle it. Yep. Neck. Open it up. Okay. Okay. Change in PCIe. Go ahead. Okay, well, okay. just to summarize, it's like, what about hot plug PCIe? And that's a good question, but it's a good question because you don't realize it's a good question, which makes it an even better question. So Thunderbolt is an implementation of PCIe that is meant to be hot plug, but ironically, that's one of the problems with Thunderbolt is that it's a direct bus interface. And so one of the reasons that we haven't seen it on PC is because with Thunderbolt, because you're plugging directly into the system bus, you can take over the system bus. And this is a security problem on PCs and has been a security problem on Mac, at least at the Black Hat hacker conferences. So there is already a hot plug PCIe standard in the works, and you can download the documentation for it from Intel. And you know, recently Silverstone came out with a little box that you could, you know, essentially put a graphics card in, and then you can use um, Thunderbolt to plug up to your laptop if it has Thunderbolt, and hopefully some of the ones in the future will, and then also your desktop if you want external PCIe graphics. It's also true that the uh, the older laptops had a PCIe by four card bus type interface. And you could actually go from that to external PCI Express slots. And there were a few notebook adapters that had that to let you run an external graphics card on a by 4 lane. You know, they never really caught on because, by and large, there's only a few people out there that I think would take advantage of that. A lot of people, when they buy a notebook, they want something small and they don't want to carry around yeah. the whole stuff. <laughs> I need an external dock for my video card. Why don't you just take your, You know what? Build a mini ITX machine and carry that around. That'll be less hassle than having to deal with seven different things that all require separate power bricks and separate adapters. Pretty much. Because, you, you know, you want to look like a boss at the so, coffee shop. So the problem here really is that the software has really got to support it. It's really got to support it well. And Intel's going to have to do some stuff in terms of bus isolation for security reasons. And we don't have that yet. We're headed there, but we don't have it yet. You know, M. Fitz was like right on this. He basically answered the question for us. So that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. He was like, blam, right on top of this thing. All right, this one is from Redbeard with threes and fours in his name in place of vowels. I guess you had a vowel movement. And now all you have are threes and fours left. <laughs> he violated the rules of the forum. No, that's terrible. <laughs> I have no idea. This okay, Logan's personal use of X79. On a few of the videos I've watched, you guys, I have noticed Logan's fondness of the X79 platform and his personal use of the 3820 CPU. I would like to know if he still uses it, and if so, can I get an explanation why? I need to upgrade my system and continuously um, run circles on myself in my research. So he just wants to know why I'm using that. Because um, the X79 platform has 400 million PCI Express lanes. That's really what it is. It's because it's the most hardcore Intel platform. Um, Let's suppose that you had an HDMI streaming adapter and multiple SSDs and a dual gigabit NIC. That you and two needed, graphics cards. And two graphics cards that you needed to write to. The, yeah, you don't have enough PCI Express. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous connectivity. If I was building a, a system, well, I'm using this one because I'm, I'm doing editing, I'm doing sound recording, I've got a million things plugged into this thing. I've got 74 flash drives and everything else and external hard drives up my ears and 
just there's so much stuff going on with that machine and it never misses a beat um, but if i wanted to build something just for gaming i would go I, I like quiet i would go a little lower power maybe a 770 a gtx 770 or a 7970 and i would put that in the smallest enclosure ever with a you know like a mini itx the new impact is coming out from asus it's a um, mini itx board that has some really awesome sound it's got like a daughter board just for the sound sticking up and it's got the daughter board for the v-regs um, or the vrm that that's probably what i would do so it all depends on what you need i use the 3820 because it has a really good frequency advantage and i like that in some video games um it's got a big big frequency advantage over the six core that is but i would never give up my six core i have a 3930k and they can have it when they pry it from my cold dead hands but i also enjoy having eight ram slots yeah, I'm moving to 6-core as soon as the uh, Ivy Bridge E comes out. So, all right. And you know what? Right here, I have Feral Shadow, the first thing. What's the purpose of your uh, build? Gaming, 3D design, video editing? That's exactly what you need to be asking yourself. What is the purpose? Because if you're only doing gaming, you do not need 2011, especially if you're doing it with one GPU. If you're doing the multiple GPU, yeah. I'm also the kind of guy that doesn't really upgrade my machine for a while because moving my software around is a pain in the ass. And yeah. so if you get, you know, you don't need a 3930 unless you really need a workhorse machine that's going to last five years. It'd be better to get slower machines or like Haswell or something cheaper more often. Get two of those. Or if you're just gaming and you get an 8350 in the biggest graphics card you can find because the, the amount of speed you get out of, an, out of an 8350 and also the fact that a lot of the newer games are being optimized for more cores, it's quite nice. Yeah, honestly, getting a new machine every 18 months with that strategy is a much better thing than buying a really nice, you know, X79. <laughs> yeah, you'll be, in two years, you'll be faster than the people who are upgrading for five in five-year increments. Um, okay, what router should I get? This is from Oscar... Um, and uh, he's a Hesex Syndicate. I'm looking for a new router that I can get in the UK to connect to a Virgin Media fiber connection. I'm going to get... You guys can read it on the screen. Okay, so fiber. That makes me think fast. You're going to want to build your own router. There we, you go. We did a video for that. You need to go look. It's a PFSense router video. You can use an old PC with a bunch of network cards that you have laying around, or you can go or, on eBay and get an Alix platform and use pull that. them up so you can see. Those are tiny. They're like six inches square and an inch tall. You can get them with three Ethernet interfaces. That's what you want. That is the most consistent router experience. Yeah, it's a little pricey if you go with the Alix form factor, but if you use an old machine to try it and try the software, you'll like it. You'll really like it. Yeah, it's really, really nice. Um, I mean, here's a great little bundle. It's 200 bucks, but you get the board and you get the tiny enclosure plus a compact flash card for your OS. That's really amazing. Yeah, and it's so simple to install. So just watch our video on PFSense. You install it to the, uh, the the compact flash card, plug it in, and it's running. If you want wireless, you get a separate wireless box and plug it in one of the network ports. I'd recommend that you get, like, a Cisco dual band. They're, like, $200 on eBay right now. Yeah, and some of them you can even install wireless on board. Yeah, that's you true. Know, you can just get a separate wireless card, like a laptop-style or size wireless card. You can get, even get wireless AC, and you know, if 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 the software, I'm not sure if PFSense supports it yet. It has kind of spotty support for wireless N even at the moment. Yeah, you can also run DDWRT instead of PFSense on the same hardware and, and get a little bit more mileage out of the wireless. But I prefer having a separate device for wireless. The Cisco is not bad, but you could also use just a, you know a regular cheap consumer grade wireless access point also like ubiquity ubiquity's wireless stuff is really amazing and half the cost of cisco don't ever buy cisco stuff new yeah no 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 use. never do that you can you can usually build something for a, a fraction of the cost or get used parts or ubiquity and you can mount those all over your house and have repeaters and it, it'd be a lot of fun the cisco dual band wireless stuff is is nothing to sneeze at and it's normally like a thousand bucks but you can get it on ebay for 200 maybe i should put up some ebay links we have an ebay affiliate account but i've never really used it before <laughs> I, I maybe we'll make a dollar i don't know yeah just build your own router and start you know if that sounds all intimidating and crazy get an old pc like a pentium 4 or an old core 2 duo put two or three network cards in it put pf sense on it you can do it it's not a big deal you'll be fine so yeah you know there's not a lot of people in here saying that you should build your own they're all right re <clears throat> like recommending d links and stuff guys you should have been linking our video i'm gonna go home and cry myself to sleep yeah i was done with routers about five years ago I have to admit that I've got a router over there. It's hiding under all those boxes, but it's running DDWRT. So even if you do get a router, uh, and it's going to be a pre you know prepackaged router, make sure it supports third party third party <laughs> third party firmware uh, like DDW, DDWRT or was it what's the tomato firmware? Um, what else is there? I don't even know. 
Yeah, you don't want to run the normal firmware because all the normal firmware is terrible. Okay, next one is from uh, Blint uh, Will, and he wants to know uh, what file system he should use with over 16 terabytes. And, you know, he's got the question here. Uh, he's got a server RAID card, and um, he's got some options, JFS, XFS, ZFS. Any suggestions? ZFS is what I would use. I've got a router over here and the floor, and that's running um, uh, open, uh, uh, free NAS, I'm sorry, open. I was, I was thinking open, uh, open, what, open, WRT. Now it's running uh, free NAS, and on that we've got three uh, hard drives in there, and we're running uh, ZFS, and we're, we're doing, um, uh, what's what's it called, Wendell? The, RAID uh, Z. Yeah, RAID Z, I was going to say, Z RAID. Yeah, with my RAID. My brain, this, is, this hurts my brain. I was, Z RAID. The only trick with Z RAID, RAID Z is that you've got a choice of RAID Z, RAID Z2, RAID Z3, and the number refers to the number of redundant disks that you have. And so if you, you the trick is that, at least with the implementation on FreeBSD, you've got to use a power of two number of disks plus ever how many parity disks you need. So with 16 terabytes, you know, that's a minimum of four four terabyte drives plus one four terabyte drive. He says he has parity. six three terabyte drives. Oh, he has six three terabyte drives. So the setup there would probably be that you use four three terabyte drives and two for parity. So that'd be RAID Z2, and you're going to lose um, six terabytes for storage. But you'll have 10 terabytes in total, and it'll be very secure. He was running RAID 5 array with the six terabyte, three terabyte drives, but uh, that'll be more secure, and you'll have more space. Yeah, yeah, RAID 5, you don't, it, RAID Z is much more secure. RAID Z is also, see, most people don't realize with RAID 1, like for example, you have um, two disks that are mirrored. And so let's assume that one of the disks has turned into an evil disk and it is returning bad data. There's nothing in the RAID controller to know that there's bad data coming from the first disk in, in the mirror. With RAID Z, there is. There's, there's integrity at the block level. And so... In, in that situation with RAID 1, if the first disk is returning bad data, there could be good data on the second disk, but you can't get at it. There's no real way to get to it. RAID Z solves this problem. Now, I want to mention with FreeNAS, if you're running FreeNAS, um, it also supports shadow copy, so you'll be able to go back in time and look at all your files, and that'll even work in Windows, but there's a little... There's a few hoops that you have to jump through to make it work in Windows. And we made a video, but it's not out yet for that. Yeah, we shot a video on that. It's, we got about 30 videos to edit. It's ridiculous. FreeNAS is an amazing file storage operating system, and ZFS is an amazing file storage architecture. And that's the end of that. That's all there is to it. All right, page one. All right. Capsized it says, Many PC project help. Hey, guys, Robert here. So I have an i5-3570K, and I've always wanted a mini ITX system. Currently, my system is an ATX, and I'm thinking about shrinking it down to a mini ITX form factor. My question is this. Should I keep all my parts and throw together a Z77 chipset motherboard, or should I take the plunge and spend all the cash on a Haswell CPU and motherboard like the newly announced ROG Mini ITX board or any of the new Mini ITX Haswell compatible motherboards that are going to hit the market soon? Thanks. Oh wait, this is a terrible choice because comment 6 is, I've decided to buy a Z77 chipset ITX board and shove it in the Fractal Design Node 304. Alright, fair enough. Moving right along. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can still answer it for anybody else out there. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll pretend that didn't happen. I'll just answer it. So. so, well, okay, that part of the question is really terrible because right now Z77 is artificially low price. So for about the next month, month and a half, you can get some really sweet deals on Z77 stuff because all the vendors want to get rid of their stuff. Right. At the end of the day, the Haswell is really not much faster, although it does produce less heat. If you're not overclocking it. If you're not overclocking it, it produce more heat. If you are overclocking if it. You, if you're producing, if you're overclocking it, you might as well just pour liquid. You know, it's just a liquid molten something. It's bad. <laughs> it makes its own liquid molten something, but... We've replaced your CPU with a thermite reaction. If you're going to be doing gaming, I mean, the i5 already is freaking fast, and it, it's it's almost ridiculous to get a 3770K if you're gaming. It just makes no sense to me, because you could put more money into the, uh, the GPU. So that's what I, I would probably stick with the, the 3570 and get a cheap um, ITX board. You know, the ASRock board's pretty good, too. It has an MSATA slot on the back. We play with that one a bit, the Z77 Azeroth. Oh, yeah. that, that one's a good choice as well. That was in my home theater PC because it was on sale. <laughs> it was on sale. I've got one because it was on sale as well, but I ended up using the Asus for the Honey Badger because it's it's better. By a little, but it's I like it better. All right, this one here. Uh, I, I don't know how to say some of these names. The Miss Zoo, XU? What was that? Uh, or is it one word like the Miss Xu? <laughs> Unpronounceable user ID number 31784. <laughs> Hey, okay, this is the stealthy return. Hey, I don't, I don't see that many people are talking about Thief. 
you have a video game saying play old games and the thief series was one of uh, the ones mentioned or one of the mentioned personally i've played through only one with a friend and it was pretty fun what are your thoughts on this game excited not much emotion all right love stealthy games um i played the hell out of thief back in the day that game was a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to the new one, but I hope they don't screw it up. They better not screw it up. It better have the same feel as the original. The original had like this, had the quirky dialogue and, and the kind of dopey guards that walked around going, was that a rat I heard? Just the wind. You know, the, <laughs> the ridiculously crappy AI, you would run right by and be like, hey, what's that? And then you'd run over in the corner and be like, must be nothing. So almost as bad as the Deus Ex AI, but um, there's a gnat in here. I'm looking forward to the new Thief, and uh, if it sucks, I'll, I'll just play an indie game instead. I don't, I don't know. All right. Go away. Let's probably close this video out and then go to another one. What do you say? Yes, let's close it out. Oh, well, that was the closing then. <laughs> Subscribe down there. Do it now. Do it. Do it right now. Or else, I'm going to come to your house, and I'm going to fill your booth with uh, so much soup. Well, wow. That's a good idea. Um, it's, the soup's going to be so salty that it'll send you into anaphylactic shock when you put your boots on. Immediately right after. Because that's not even possible. But, but. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe.